I'm Joe Kiesis, and I'm president of Equity Metals. Thank you for listening to the story so close to mine. I'll quickly go through. And we are an exploration group. Uh, our properties in Western uh, Canada. I always will be doing some forward-looking statements because it is exploration. So, in effect, we took over the management of this company in 2019. They were a struggling little company. They had a small resource that had very good grade. We looked at the resource. We thought this is probably related to one of the surrounding porphyry coppers, but we think we can make this a lot bigger. So we just uh, recently showed the results of our work. And uh, from the 2019 resource, we've increased it as a silver equivalent of almost 300 or 200% in the inferred category, uh, 30%. It's a polymetallic deposit. You can see the breakdown in mineralization. A lot of people like to look at it as silver equivalent. You can add these two numbers in your head or these two numbers if you like looking at it in, in gold equivalent. So we think we can continue to explore this and to extend the mineralization. And we're planning a 500 meter drilling program on uh, some targets that are already defined and we'll be starting that sometime in the second, third quarter, and probably around March. So we're a small company. Uh, you can see from, we've had a number of uh, pretty exciting drill intercepts during the time that we've been drilling. Price has risen pretty well. We took a, uh, a down dip along with many of the smaller companies in the junior exploration space. Uh, we came up with our resource update right here. You can see the market liked it, and uh, we spiked up quite a bit. We're still trading as a uh, market cap of about $22 million, almost just a little under $20 million. We just completed a financing, so we're at $3 million, and we're well-funded to do the exploration that we have planned. So what's that going to be? Well, I guess before we get to that, a lot of these names you've seen before were part of the Banish group of companies. I won't go into the details here. You can stop by our booth at 228 if you want to find out some of the details. The projects are located in Western Canada. Our primary target here is the uh, Silver Queen project. There are also diamonds in the La Gra, uh diamond area. There's the Silica Sand project, which is kind of interesting because it probably is a good source for uh, turning silica, silica sand into silicon, which can be used in uh, lithium batteries. Uh, we're not doing a great deal of work on any of these projects. Uh, we also have this royalty on the Greenwood District. We're going to be talking about the, uh, the focus of our work, which is Silver Queen. It's located in the, an area uh, in central British Columbia. A lot of porphyry coppers in the area. We think the mineralization we're seeing in veins are well above the porphyry copper at depth. There's some past production. There was a fair amount of uh, development work in the 1970s during the last silver increase. Um, it's all flooded now, but we have access to it. So we liked the project because we thought we could increase the resource quickly. We've done that. We've drilled 78 holes since we took over management and. Uh, started drilling in 2020, and we've done that at a very effective, cost-effective rate of $11 in gold equivalent or $0.15 cents in silver equivalent. We think we can continue, maybe not quite under those uh, advantageous terms, but we think there's some pretty good uh, potential here. So not just adding ounces effectively, you know, we think the prize is uh, very, very worthy of finding, and uh, you know, we've worked in the Golden Triangle. It's very expensive, very expensive to produce from. The logistics here are, are great. Here's the town of Houston, paved road. There's a gravel, good gravel road goes down to the Huckleberry Mine. Power goes, uh, follows that uh, to the Huckleberry Mine. We're also on the east side of the high mountain range in the coast, uh, the coast mountains. And that means that instead of three months of uh, field season that we had in the Golden Triangle, uh, we have basically all year round. We've drilled through the last two winters uh, straight on through. It's a little bit more expensive, but you can do it. It's not something you can do when there's 10 meters of snow very easy. 
Uh, there's a good road access. You can see this is the entrance to our camp, camp off in the distance, girl rig. Uh, you can drive to large portions of the property. So there are about 20 veins that are exposed on the project that have been known historically. A lot of the area, though, is covered by the grassland or forest. So I think there are probably quite a few additional veins that uh, we'll be finding and exploring over the years. We take a look at where the uh, veins are now. This is the western part of our project. There's about two and a half kilometers by two and a half kilometers. The red areas are veins that are known. The uh, primary initial resource was along this number three vein. There was some drilling over here on the camp vein, but uh, the continuity was a problem. Uh, we did some detailed drilling and understood that instead of being trending this way, the veins are actually trending more east-west. And so uh, we've been able to put together a very nice resource uh, addition. Early on in this area in particular, we had some really good results. This is hole 10. All that red-brown that you see in the vein zone here is uh, ruby silver. So that interval there, it's only about a third of a, a meter, but it's within a, a bigger zone of veining. But that uh, three-tenths of a meter zone runs 59,000 grams per ton silver. So very spectacular high-grade zones along narrow zones, but within envelopes of a potentially mineable resource. The veins tend to be uh, zoned. There's a porphyry copper that historically has had some, uh, some work. Copper at Mali, there's about six holes in that. The veins in this area are primarily, uh, the value comes from gold and copper. As you go outward, it's more silver, less copper, less gold. So there's a nice zone system. Again, it's consistent with perhaps a large porphyry system at depth driving this. These are the average grades if you look at a gold and silver equivalent or gold equivalent. And what are we going to do in 2023? So most of the mineralization in the resource is along this area and in this area. A little bit in here. It's a little patchy in here, so we want to do some infill drilling there. The open or the last hole that we've drilled along the western zone here has seven and a half meters of almost 800 grams silver equivalent. So we have some holes planned for uh, expanding this mineralization off to the uh, west as well. You can see you have east-west trending structural zones. You have north northwest trending structural zones. Probably not a surprise that our best grade and thickness occurs right in here and right in here at these intersections. We have some of those other interceptions, intersections that we plan on testing. Um, there's some shallow holes in this area. We're going to do some surface work before we start filling those areas, hopefully the later part of 2023. There are some drill holes that are fairly deep with numbers that are very similar to uh, some of the intercepts that we get sort of on the periphery in the number three vein in the Storage Lake, George Lake South, and Coal Lake. So those are the areas that we'll be drilling after we uh, complete our drilling in this area right here. So we think we're a good uh, you know, portfolio of projects, really being led by our, our uh, Silver Queen project. We've had very good luck in very high grade uh, mineralization, understanding the geometry, trying to uh, project where we can come up with additional resources, and we've done that, and we've done that at a very low cost. So uh, look forward to our drilling programs in 2023.